The Caldor fire spreading in El Dorado County is forcing more evacuations. A combination of low humidity and dry fuels putting a stop to the flames spreading extremely difficult. More than 37,000 people have been evacuated due to the Caldor fire. Some new evacuation orders were issued today, and for the first time, people in the Tahoe Basin and Amador County were included in those orders. In the Tahoe Basin, Christmas Valley, Echo Summit, and Myers are all part of the latest orders. The city of South Lake Tahoe is not included, but they are are under evacuation warnings as of tonight. People in areas along Highway 89 and Highway 88 have also been told to leave. Highway Patrol closed Highway 89 today because of the fire danger. The closure is in the area of the Dew Drop Bypass near the El Dorado and Amador County lines. Caltrans says that this is an extended closure and they are not clear as to when the road could reopen. Highway 50 remains closed along a 40 mile stretch from Pollock Pines to Sawmill Road. Now this fire has burned more than 168,000 acres is currently 13% contained. Cal Fire says more than 21,000 structures are being threatened. More than 470 have burned. And this fire has been very active today. Chief Meteorologist Mark Fine here to show us where fire crews have had challenges. And Walter, today we just started getting a little bit of wind on the fire, but still the fire reacted. We saw a lot more growth on the fire today than we had in the last few days. Now this is the overall footprint of the fire as of tonight. During the day today, we saw very minimal activity on the west side of the fire, but there are two areas on the east side that did see a lot of growth. This one coming out of the southeast part of the fire growing toward Highway 88. That's Silver Lake right there. It's because of the growth down here that we now have the closure on Highway 88 and the evacuations for that part of Amador County. Let's go a little bit farther north because this is the area that has had a lot of attention during the day today and a lot of growth. We have seen the fire grow up on both sides of Highway 50 during the day today. As a matter of fact, I can show you where the footprint of the fire was last night. This yellow line is the extent of the fire we had last night. So all of this out in here on both sides is new growth. That was a lot of growth up the valley today. It includes the areas like in here. That is the Sierra at Tahoe Ski Resort right in here. We also saw damage in the area around Camp Sacramento, which is not too far away from the ski resort. And as you go a little bit farther to the east, you can see this road right here. That is Christmas Valley. That's Highway 89. A lot of homes, a lot of neighborhoods in here, and of course a lot of homes around the Myers area as well, and you can see how close it is to that area right now. The winds today were relatively modest and they'll start that way during the day tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, the winds will be light and variable around nine o'clock, just the kind of light winds we usually see in the morning. That's nine o'clock. Look at the wind we're going to have by noontime. Southwesterly winds at 15 to 17, probably gusting to 30 miles an hour. It's going to be really difficult to keep these fires from doing some extreme spotting during the day tomorrow. That means these areas along Highway 89 as well as Highway 50 and Highway 88. It may be very difficult to keep the fire out of those neighborhoods during the day tomorrow. Walter. All right, Mark, thank you. And as Mark mentioned, the Caldor fire made its way through Sierra at Lake Tahoe and then jumped Highway 50 North. KCRA 3's Brittany Hope joins us live from Pollock Pines. And Brittany, how close to the South Lake Tahoe area were you able to get to tonight? Today, the two biggest problems we faced, Walter, was cell service and those spot fires, as we just heard Mark mentioning there for us. Apollic Pines here is where we are now, and this is the closest we could get for a live report where we had cell service. But earlier tonight, the closest we actually got to that fire was just west of Sierra at Tahoe. That's where law enforcement and fire crews there just told us it would be too dangerous to continue heading east. West of Kybers, the Caldor fire still burning on both sides of Highway 50 tonight. Flames reaching all the way down to the water and up to the top of the tree line. It's a lot of fuel, a lot of incredibly dry fuel. Today is the hottest, driest day we've had on the fire. Our humidity is incredibly low. And as this wind increases, the rate of spread increases, and then we the spotting fire distance increases as well. We met Captain Jason Hunter at Horsetail Falls, just past Strawberry, closer to Sierra at Tahoe. At around 5 o'clock, Captain Hunter said this new spot fire began. We're seeing some extreme fire behavior up the hill in these steep canyons. These tough conditions preventing us for some time from going any further east. It's about 6 o'clock right now. We've been stopped here at Pyramid Creek Trailhead for about 45 minutes. Law enforcement had us wait for a long time so they could go up the highway here to safe. It was safe and we finally just got the clearance to get a little bit closer. 
As soon as we got closer, so did this line of fire crews working to get past this new roadblock. It came through pretty quick, but I don't know how wide of a path it cut. Wow. In the past few minutes, that brush, that fuel all down there just started flaring up. You can see that wind pushing all of that smoke now to the north. We're about two miles away from Sierra and Lake Tahoe, and this is the farthest that law enforcement will let us get because of all the flames and all the smoke just on that ridge. Captain Hunter explained the Caldor fire burned past Sierra at Lake Tahoe and jumped Highway 50 northbound this afternoon. But it's still impassable and unsafe. Uh, but less than a mile ahead of us tonight as the bright orange sun goes down. Fire crews are battling powerful winds, low visibility and lines of fire climbing up these canyon walls. And live here tonight, you can see Highway 50 is closed in both directions, starting here in Pollock Pines until you do reach the Myers area. As evacuation warnings and orders change tonight around the Tahoe Basin, again, we do want to remind you that much of Highway 88 is now closed. So if you want to leave the Lake Tahoe area and head west, let's say toward the Sacramento region, tonight your only option to do that is on Interstate 80. We're live here in Pollock Pines, Brittany Hope, KCRA 3 News. And Brittany, according to South Lake Tahoe Police, right now, Burton Hospital is currently being evacuated. Thank you very much for that live report. We also want to show you what it looks like at Sierra at Tahoe tonight. We took this time lapse video at around 930 this evening, and you can see the lookout and also the flames right there behind it. Spectacular images there. And the fire now has been moving very quickly throughout the day. Our crews near the fire lines had to shift positions a number of times to stay safe. KCRE 3's Lizzie Mitri shows us what she saw on the front lines. The head of the Caldor fire continued its push east in El Dorado County today, roaring through the trees. This is a very dynamic fire, very active and very dangerous. Captain Keith Wade is working with Cal Fire's incident management team. This is the highest temperature that the firefighters on the, on the line are experiencing, and then some of the lowest humidities, 8 to 10 percent. There are a lot of crews parked along Highway 50 here near Camp Sacramento, and this is what they're keeping an eye on. We're seeing trees torch along the hillside here. Crews prepared Camp Sacramento to try to protect it from the fire. A lot of hand crews have come through there, removed lower level vegetations, uh, cleared them back uh, in the event that the fire could catch that and get the structures uh, damaged. At about 2.30, we saw these flames spark on the north side of Highway 50, a relatively small spot fire that then erupted into this, a wall of fire raging along the highway. A five mile drive to the east, Fire crews staged at the Sierra at Tahoe Ski Resort. All the while, ash fell in the parking lot and water sprayed on the property. We're here in South Lake Tahoe now where the ash is falling around us. Captain Wade talked about how dangerous this fire is. He says one firefighter did suffer from a burn injury yesterday. He didn't know the extent of those injuries, but he did say that firefighter was taken to a trauma center. In South Lake Tahoe, Liz Amitri, KCRA 3 News. And the hazardous air across the region is making the firefight even more difficult. The thick smoke is not allowing many water or retardant drops from the air, and that's forcing most of the firefight to happen on the ground. Crews we spoke with today say they never seen anything quite like it. There's no more moisture in these in these fuels. Yeah, a lot of pretty erratic uh, fire activity, um, stuff that you don't normally see. So every time you walk, it just has this big cloud and you suck that in. When you hear the cracking, trees just buckle and they come down and you just got to run. It. And one team was nearly hit by a falling tree last night. A firefighter ended up with third degree burns. The Caldor Fire and others burning in Northern California have been sending quite a bit of smoke into the Sacramento area for the past few days. And this here is a live look at downtown where it clearly is a lot better tonight. Mark is back with us. Mark, a big improvement today in Sacramento and also in Lake Tahoe. Well, yes, it really interesting to see the way the, the smoke moved around during the day today. Started off with a lot of haze in the valley and some very poor air quality, especially in western El Dorado County. But as we got more of a breeze during the afternoon, that helped to clear many areas 
including El Dorado County, but that breeze also brought new life to that fire burning in El Dorado County as well as the Dixie fire. You can see that was going along pretty briskly as well. This is a snapshot of the current air quality. We still have this area of this light orange that is in the unhealthy for sensitive groups. The AQI between 100 150 around Sacramento, Stockton and Modesto. The areas of moderate extend throughout many foothill areas and the Bay Area. It's not until you get up to around Highway 20 into the north that you get into this unhealthy range. But even here we should see even more improvement as we head through the day tomorrow and the next couple of days. More of a breeze, but that's not good news on the fire front. More on that coming up in just a little.